Hello again, folks, and welcome back to Let's Play Solastra, Crown of the Magister. I'm your host, the Gimedarius. As we left off, we had come back, talked to the council, and they were like, well, bring proof that those bastards exist. exist. So, I gotta bring proof that the bastards exist, which is a little bit unfortunate, because that means heading closer to the Badlands. So, first off, a couple of clarifications I need to make, uh, since I had recorded it essentially four straight episodes. Um, first off, this is not based directly off of 5th edition rules. This is based off of 5th edition's SRD, a uh, 5.1 inclusion of it. By the way, that you got all the differentiations of new class features and domains and whatnot that you can select. This means that uh, unless... Wizards of the Coast decide to put in, like, Dragonborn, Tieflings, and some other staple monsters then into their SRD, then that means that you're not going to see them in this game. Which I'm fine with. This is its own separate world from Forgotten Realms and whatnot, and honestly, that's one of the biggest draws for this game to me, is that it's, it's not Forgotten Realms. I, I love Dungeons & Dragons. I really, really do. I'm a little sick of the Forgotten Realms. That's my two copper pieces. Um, in addition, uh, I had tried to look online and saw what or where it is that I can give away these uh, faction items that we have been carrying around for the last adventure. And turns out that you can only turn them in once the proper factions have introduced themselves to you. So I cannot give these things away until such time that I, uh, they actually do, which hasn't been yet. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, so until then, I'm pretty much just walking around with them on my person, being all like, yes, this is the thing I, I guess I'm doing now. Uh, real Welcome. quick, I kind of wish that the skip function was a little bit... Um, easier to reach, I guess is a good way to say it, as opposed to having to go stop talking, and then whatnot. I might... you proficient with this? Not proficient with this. I would like to get him the Poisoner's Kit at some point, but I I'm just uh, making one quick sweep, see if there anyone has anything or if I could sell anything more. I got that torch I need as a light source. Saving this for when I inevitably level up. Do that business. Newland really doesn't need the hand axe. I'm not even sure why he has it in the first place. Uh, there's also something about this game that's just, just peaceful, you know? All right, we're gonna move these arrows over to Doolin. Seriously, why are you so over encumbered? Is it all this food? Because you're carrying all this food. Spread the wealth, some lady. All right, to that end, though, we're going to finally go to the main map and head the hell out of here. Party might be a little bit tired still, seeing as it is like the dead of night. Uh, that's mostly my fault. Yeah, competed. 29 units of food, though. We'll head to Carlim first. As a sort of pit stop. Yeah, they decided to chill out in town for four days, for a little while first. Arms, armor maintenance. Yeah, I gotta keep in mind that eight hours of travel is what is always assumed. You can't, in an actual tabletop, you can't push yourself to travel more than eight hours at a time. Uh, but I find do find that that will force constitution saving throws, and when it, that happens, then bad times can happen. Uh, fatigue sets in, pretty much. I was kind of hoping for something to encounter. Eh, well. Maybe next time I'll uh, hoof it. That'll make it a little bit more of a chance of encountering something. 
Loading. Hmm. So eager to continue this quest. I'm kind of hoping that there's more uh, things to fight plot-wise anyways than just the Sarox. They are an interesting, if not weird, foe, that's for sure. But, I don't know. It's definitely away from the usual of just kobolds or goblins or even just, you know, bandits. Which have been done to death, but, you know, they're low-level staples when it comes to D&D. &D. Alright. Firstly, is there actually anything in the... Well, I checked here before. There was nothing inside the fort. So I think I'm just gonna head back out way I came. I'm going to continue along my path. I need to double check whether or not um, clerics have access to the words, things, stuff. Let's go fast. One long rest. Wondering if um, clerics have I have identified, essentially. Hey, there we go. Oh. Pretty sure those are orcs. Orcs have archers among their troops. Despite their effectiveness, they are perceived as cowards or generally second rank warriors. Berserkers. Oh, no. Crazed warriors who ignore all danger while in the battle trance. Fast and violent. They don't feel pain or fear. Shit. Well... This might suck. It's two archers and a berserker, though, so... If I can keep the berserker occupied, I feel like... Sh nah. Depends on how lucky we get with our rolls, I suppose. Uh, yep, we're all surprised. Okay, that's the berserker, right? Hmm... Don't know, but they're definitely moving in. Oh, that's got to be the Berserker. Yep, that's the Berserker. Oh, they're all asleep! Okay, so... Cool thing about being prone... Oh, balls. The cool thing about being prone is that... Uh... No longer magically asleep. Oh, you get two attacks. While prone... Range attacks have disadvantage against you, but m melee attacks have advantage against you, which is balls. But it uh, sometimes works. All right. Uh, let's get rid of some of this range, shall we? Can we? Pew pew pew. Oh, he has more than nine hit points. Yeah, that's nine hit points of damage. Okay. Can I use a bonus action to arouse my buddies? No. Alright, let's get within melee range of this guy then. Into my turn. So, Duelin gets up. Uh, why are you wielding that? There we go. Let's see. Orc has feature and combat affinity. Reckless. Oh, shit. That's right. Berserkers. The Barbarians... Berserkers in particular have what's called uh, Reckless. They can make an attack at advantage, but any attacks have on them afterwards are at... Uh, on them are made at advantage after. So that's 7 damage. Oh my god, he's got so much hit points. What CR are you? Okay. Alright. This is fine. Uh, power. Bonus action surge. I can poke. Yeah, I can poke him to awaken him. That's good. Um, poke leaf. Take it up. Then I can use second wind. That's probably not the best time to use that, but. 
Alright. I kind of wish that I had something to use. Bring disadvantage to the guy. But. I think I'm gonna. Yeah. Oh, 22 damage. Okay. Good on your leaf. Good on your leaf. Alright. Move away. Ooh. Okay, that's his reaction, though. Ooh. I don't wish it would do that uh, sort of shot thing more often. Ow. Oh, two attacks a turn. Yeah, he must be at... Yeah, I'm trying to think of what hit die. He must be at least five hit die strong. One second, let me double check something with the camera. Aim, camera, 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 brightness, contrast. I love the dice rolling. Reaction timer. Contextual camera frequency. Close up focuses. Said how often? Put that shit to max. I love that kind of crap. All right, I can move here. Wake up, Rom. Then I can cast a spell as a bonus action. I will. IAC is a sixteen. Dulin's is, I think, a seventeen. Heal to faith yourself, buddy. It's kind of funny, it says that the characters were magically asleep. They're not magically asleep. Alright. Doolin, buddy, pal, chum. Um. Stab away. 16 hits. Ugh. Just you wait until level 5. Alright, guiding bolts. Disadvantage, because they're not lit. Disadvantage, because not lit. Just a regular hit? Yeah. Another victory. This is destiny. Yeah, with that sucker doing two hits around, it's not something I wanted to risk. Ooh. Alright. Problem gets up. Um Goddamn unlit. That hits though. Good damage. Oh no, that's gonna hit. Dang it, Leaf. Well, at least we're gonna heal after all this. Uh, cast light. And then move right up in this guy's face. I'm not gonna be able to cast another spell. Well, I can cast another spell, but none of them are useful. Uh, do one stop this guy. God damn it, do one. That's fine. Alright. Logic dictates that I should burn this mofo. Good kill. He made the save, but he died anyways. Best kind of time. Ow. Pack of opportunity. Oh, he's retreating. Both of them. Successful attack. Strike him. Hoo -hoo. Oh, that was a hundred. Oh, we leveled up. We leveled up. We leveled up. We leveled up something fierce. Whew. All right. The only. Th Seriously, the only person that dropped something was this guy. Money. Great axe. Gotta bring him to sell it. I've already got a set of chain mail, so I'm gonna worry about that. That guy didn't drop anything, did he? Didn't look like it. Alright. I, uh. Think we can finish our long rest. And we should level up afterwards. I love the random encounters in this. I really do. Uh, interrupt. Excuse me. Should we not have leveled up? Yeah, a little bit of injury. Yep, level up. 
All right, third level cleric. Some more hit points, and finally, second level spells. Oh yeah. <sighs> Which means I can prepare some new spells. Uh, two spell slots. So, the way that clerics, uh, pretty much all prepared casters work, they can prepare amount of spells up to their caster level, plus their ability modifier that governs their spell casting. In this case, wisdom. So let's see, flaming sphere, frick yes, acid arrow, also frick yes. Ancient eighteen squares. Holy shit. We're gonna remove. Yeah, remove aid and enhance ability. Prayer of healing is really nice. Multiple healing at the same time. It does have a casting time of 10 minutes. But that'd be 2d8 of casting that you don't need to worry about at another time. Spiritual weapon will allow me to summon up a weapon just to do damage with. Blindness is nice. Blind traps we have a rope for. Enhance ability is funky? In old editions, it used to simply increase that stat. In this one, it makes it so as you have advantage on any checks related to that stat and some other bonuses, depending on what it was. For example, Constitution gives you more temporary hit points. Strength gives you increased care capacity, blah, blah, blah. And it only lasts for an hour. I think instead I'm going to go with Hold Person, which will effectively paralyze someone. Or a minute, assuming that I, you know, and assuming that I make the Constitution saving throws. Yes, finally. So, Rom is now a level the rogue. We can now actually go into his archetypes. Most classes will have an archetype that they can go into at level three. Sometimes level two for wizards. Clerics get their archetype through their divine domain. Uh, it's understood. So we can make him more into a thief character. Uh, fast hands allows him to use an object as with his cunning actions. No longer costs him extra movement to climb difficult uh, surfaces. He can jump longer distances. Dark Weaver, chained in a secret society that extends throughout the kingdoms, develop techniques to improve their mobility in all three dimensions and master the art of poison crafting. So he would get the Poisoner's Kit. Climbing no longer costs you extra movement and, double, and difficult climb surfaces are considered normal to you. When hitting a creature on lower ground with a ranged weapon, add your proficiency bonus to the damage. That's actually pretty cool. Shadowcaster. Are trained in arcane magic as well as in roguish abilities. They are tricksters who use magic to make their moves even more unpredictable and unstoppable. Some believe they don't really exist. Ooh. Oh, this might actually be good. Cast wizard spells and cantrips from the divinity, or sorry, divination, illusion, necromancy, and abjuration schools. Those are some pretty nasty schools. As a bonus action, teleport to a cell you can see within five cells. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Hmm. Ah, oh, but I want him to learn Poisoner's Kit. Hitting... Oh, man. This would put him at a pretty good advantage, though. He can just bonus action teleport away. I, li I like that. I can go back if I don't like the spell selection. Launches an Illusionary Dagger that does a D8 Psychic Damage. Gains temporary hit points for one minute. Target sees an illusion, be, an illusionally, illusional bee flying, harassing him. Her disadvantage on concentration checks until the start of its next turn. Dazzle. Wait, did they fix true strike in this? I'm wondering. Oh, not really. Increase your chance to hit the target. You can see one more time. So pretty much, this would grant me. Advantage with one strike. The caveat is that it's an action to use true strike. So you use true strike, you stand there for a turn, and then you can use the next attack that does true strike. Oh! 
Okay. Alright, well, first I'm going to collect collect the cantrips. Uh, lowers the target's AC, prevents reaction until the start of its next turn. That's nice. Uh, shadow armor has meh. Again, these are cantrips. Actually. Preventing healing for a limited time. If undead, disadvantage on attacking the caster. No, 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 no. Back, no, back. Dazzle, Chill Touch. I'm gonna go with True Strike, why the hell not? Alright, three subclass ones. Uh, shield is always good. You can use it as a reaction to just put up this shield that provides plus five to your AC and immunity to Magic Missile. I'm taking Identify, because this means I don't have to spend 50 some odd gold pieces at a shop just to do it. <laughs> and it's a ritual too. So I can cast this without worrying about whether or not I'm um, using up a spell slot. Gain a few temporary hit points for a limited time. Detect magic. Mage armor is also good. But he's already rocking armor. So, color spray is neat. Pretty much anyone that fails their saving throw within that cone becomes blinded. Ah, that's a good one. Shut up, phone. Wait, is it... Target 3D... Oh, is that 3D8? Oh, no, that's 3... Okay, never mind. I forget how to read this thing. Uh, per spell slot... Oh, right. Hmm, might not be that good in this time. So pretty much it makes it so as 3d6 worth of creatures within the cells falls asleep. Of uh, 3d6 hit points worth of uh, creatures. I could I could take detect magic with him. Nah, color spray. Too advantageous. All right. Level up for Doolin. He also gets a martial archetype. Nope, that's not the martial archetype. Now, I've pretty much already figured out what I'm going to do with this guy, but let's, let's read over what we got, shall we? Champion. Focus on raw physical power honed by deadly perfection. Those who model themselves on this physical, on this archetype combine rigorous training with physical excellence to deal devastating blows. Pretty much their only thing that is worth note, uh, the champion's thing is worth note, is that they get improved critical. Any weapon attack that they do scores a critical hit, which does double damage and always hits on a 19 or 20. That's pretty much it. It's still a useful thing, but... Mm. Mountaineers are trained to fight in difficult terrain and confined spaces. They are capable skirmishers and know how to take advantage of small spaces given the right equipment. So, they can make shove attempts when using a shield, advantage on shove attempts rather, and when using a shield, gain plus 2 AC when you have a wall on one of your four sides. That's pretty neat, but that's not do one. And in lieu of the fact that there's no bards in this game, spell blades are as skilled with arcane magic as with their weapons. This versatility is a weapon in, it, in itself, often surprising enemies who tend to think an armored fighter cannot cast spells. So he's going to be based more on intelligence stuff, but conjuration, evocation, transmutation, and enchantment. Plus, his weapon attacks count as magical against creatures that are resistant or immune to non-magical attacks. That's pretty dope. And that is what we're going to go with. In the actual game, uh, Eldritch Knight would be the name of this, but this is not actually the Eldritch Knight thing, so yeah. Uh, so if I, I want to say that they're based off of intelligence, since we're working with wizard spells. Um, I kind of want to go with... Chucking Grasp is nice. Dancing Lights is okay. That would make it... That would fix our light solution. 
control our light problem. Poisonous spray does d12 poison damage, saves to negate the damage. Firebolt is really good for a rain solution. So we're going to take Firebolt. Uh, actually, wait. 12, D6. Mm, this is a spell attack, though. That's a save to negate. Shit. I know I want Dancing Lights. That's a ranged hit. The only thing I'm considering here is that his spell save DC is based off would be based off of his intelligence, I wanna say. Because Spellblade. Uh I don't have it listed here, which is a little concerning. So I wanna go with a little bit of spell versatility, but I think I'm gonna go with Firebolt. Um, subclass skill spells. So, this is where some of the more fun begins. A uh, charm person makes it so as a singular creature becomes an ally. Uh, hideous laughter is a fun one. Makes it so as a singular creature falls over laughing its ass off. Uh, effectively becoming... Incapacitated, falling on the ground, just laughing and rolling around. I kind of want to take that, but I'm definitely going to take Charm Person. Burning Hands is neat. That's 3d6 fire damage to anything within that cone. Saves for half damage as opposed to full. I'm going to go with Thunder Wave. Hmm... I'd go with Magic Missile, but eh. Okay, Tasha's Hideous. Again, Spell Save DC is going to be a little bit eh. Uh, sleep, though. Number of enemies puts to sleep for a limited time. Inflicts magical sleep. Yes. I'll read... Yeah. And then finally we have Leaf. Level 3 Clark. Doesn't yet get any of the cooler abilities yet, but... More spell slots. Prepare those spells. Uh, also, let's see, she gained... Oh, she now gets Misty Step. That is such a good ability. It teleports the caster six, feet, six cells away. Up to six cells away. As a bonus action at that. Um, you're a, uh, lesser restoration. This one makes it so as it will remove blinded, diseased, paralyzed, and poisoned. Kind of wish it wasn't a touch spell, but I digress. Um, I should also take. Hmm. You remove Bane. Oh, Thunder Wave is already a domain spell. Never mind. Shut up. Go to hell. Um,. I think, I think we're good. Yeah. So is that shit. Alright, might as well resume. Oh, I got some angry violet. Wait, did we go there and then just back up, or? Bills a fallow deer, eight food rations, nice. Assumes four. <laughs> I'm actually on net positive when it comes to the food. Alright, I'm going to let this load up and then I'm going to save and call an episode. Assuming that there's no cinematics or whatnot. Probably going to be cinematics. I gotta hope there's cinematics. Menacing sounding, low rumbling noises. This tower is some sort of messed up, isn't it? Alright. We're gonna save proper like because I am paranoid about things messing up. And we're gonna call an episode. When we return, 
we are going to um, check out the sour and see if we can't get some actual proof of some actual Sarox. And should we fail? Well, I don't know. In any case, thank you everyone so very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the series as much as I'm loving playing it. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Cheers.